Hey, what's up guys, Mendel here. Hope you are all doing awesome and wonderful. So in this video, we're gonna dive into some master bus processing on a modern metal mix. So as always, let's take right in, here we go. All right, so here we are in Cubase. Now, this is a band that I mixed and mastered called Futility, and they were kind enough to let me use this song called All The Same for this video. I think the song will be released somewhere next year, so make sure you check it out. The band is called Futility, and the song is called All The Same. So we first gonna listen to some music, and then we're gonna start putting stuff on the master bus, or the two bus. So, here we go. First, the verse part. All right, so the first thing I like to do uh, when I put stuff on the master bus is a compressor. Now, actually a very cool compressor is the tube compressor, and I made two presets. So I'll first dig into the this one and the HP one right after it. So what I like to aim for is around two to maximum four decibels of gain reduction. That's That's what I like. So I like to use a late attack to preserve those snare transients, like overall transients, an early release. And in this case, I use a low ratio. If I would use a different compressor, it could be like four to one. But on this one, I like to use the, the low one. And let's take a listen. So I'll start with the double kicks. So I like how that sounds. It like it glues it a bit more together. It's it tucks those snare trenches down a tiny bit and the vocals, like the pokey things a tiny bit, and two decibels is enough for me. Now, what I was talking about about the HP thing, the cool thing about this compressor is you have like a, a sidechain high pass filter. So basically you roll off everything. Like let's say before, below 150 hertz, or it depends where this is, but you roll it off to the detector of the compressor. So basically, you're compressing a filtered mix, but what you hear is obviously not filtered. But the cool thing about this is because this mix has so much energy, there's so much kicks, and in my mixes, I like those subby kicks, like 50 hertz, like you can really feel it, but that can sometimes like hit the compressor too hard. By filtering off like that like around 100 hertz perhaps, it, it makes the, the compressor a bit less pumpy. So let's take a listen. So I can also hear the kick is a bit more preserved. And just to show you, show you like for a sweet spot, if I would put it at 20K, it wouldn't compress at all. It would like filter off the whole mix. But by pulling it down, you can see there could be like a sweet spot. For, um, for compression. So this, this I, I like how it sounds, I'm gonna keep this. Now a cool thing about the compressor, you have this character knob, which almost makes it, to my ear, like a smiley curve, but a bit more towards the high. So perhaps I'm gonna use it, perhaps not. I'm just gonna use my ears.
I like it around 20%. So then what I like to use is I like to use a multi-band compressor and I'll tell you why. So the tube compressor compresses the overall mix. Now the cool thing about this uh, multi-band compressor, and I use this preset often. So what I like to do is basically gently compress on the different bands, the tiny peaks. So I know this mix very well. So you definitely see that on the lower mids, like on the snare, it kind of pulls it down a tiny bit. So what it basically is doing, it flattens the overall curve of the mix. So it compresses the lows nice, the kick, and around the mid range, there's a, perhaps a bit too much. I like a lot of mids in my guitars, so perhaps it was a bit too much. I like how it sounds here though. So by just ducking that down, especially around the lower mid range, that definitely solves, well, some of the issues that were like poking out of the mix. I do think it's compressing the lower mids a tiny bit too much, like around this area. I'm saying lower mids, but from 200 to 2K. Perhaps I'm just gonna put this a tiny bit to the left, tilts to 1K and a tiny bit left. All right, so that already sounds better to my ears. So we've done the tube compressor, the multiband. Now I'm gonna use frequency. Now what I most of the time do is first filter off low stuff, like sub stuff that I don't need, like stuff that's just cluttering up the mix. Around there, I basically don't need a, like everything below 35 hertz in my mix. Now what I'm gonna do is just gonna listen to the mix and I'm gonna like try to listen if there are like frequencies between, I don't know, like perhaps like five or 500 and 5K for some whistle frequency that are poking out through the mix. Now, to be honest, in this mix, and I'll be honest, I, that doesn't happen often, but I don't hear things I want to cut. But just for demonstration purposes, what I would do is I would then like try to find a frequency. So let's say somewhere around between one and 5K. <laughs> So that frequency, and I could either cut it, or the cool thing we have with frequency two, we have the dynamic EQ. So every time when that EQ pokes, it like ducks it down. Okay, so now I do hear a frequency somewhere poking out. That's it. All 
All right, it sounds good. I do hear still after the multi-band compressor, still a tiny pokey thing of the snare, the body of the snare. I need to be careful with this because I don't want to ruin all the body of the snare. Okay, it already sounds better for my ears. Now, normally, if the mix would be a bit dull, I could lift it around here, but this mix is already pretty bright. The guitars are pretty sharp, like on the edge of sharpness, but I like how fierce it sounds, so I'm not gonna add more of that. I just like where it sits now, brightness-wise. But I removed those frequencies that my eyes like weren't liking. So now a final simple step you could do on your master bus is use the imager. Now, a cool thing with the imager, it could make the mix sound a bit more wider, but you need to be really, really careful with this because this could really ruin your whole mix. Now, where I most of the time like to use it, and to be honest, I don't use an imager on every mix. It depends on the mix. So I'm just going to solo these and be careful with this because it can ruin your whole perspective of the mix. But just so you know what's going on. So 0% is full mono, and this is like, like above 100% is totally widening. So I wouldn't use it in solo, but just to show you that the function is pretty cool. But when I will actually listen to it, I would do something like this. And I can see my low end is pretty mono already. Like for example, if you if you would do something for vinyl, uh, definitely go mono everything below 100 or 115 hertz. So I like where it's sitting, but just in case I can narrow it. I hope you can hear that the guitars are a tiny bit like wider in this in the stereo field. So that sounds pretty cool. All right, so there you go. There are some basics for doing stuff on the master bus. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And until then, see you next time. <laughs>